we are at scratch.mit.edu and the first thing you want to do is you want to click here and join the Scratch community. After you pick your username and password it will allow you to log in and the advantage of logging in is that it will let you save your work so that the next time you come here to the site you won't have to start over and can continue working on whatever projects you have going on right here and the last project I was working on was this one however let's uh, let's just start a whole new project so we're gonna go with create and that's gonna give us a brand new project to work with and this little character in the middle of the screen is known as scratchy and scratchy is the default sprite that is provided in a new project but let me show you how to add other sprites by clicking here in the new sprite button and I'm going to add Abby who happens to be the first one here I'm going to double click on her and here she is and I can change the size of these sprites by clicking on the increase size or decrease size buttons over here so for example if I wanted to make Abby a little bit smaller let's say to match scratchy size I can go like that and if I want to make scratchy a little bit bigger I can click the grow button and make scratchy bigger like that so the next thing we want to do is we want to save our work periodically. Right now you can see that this project is untitled. I'm going to come over here and call this project Moving Sprites because that's what we're going to focus on today. And then we're going to hit the Save Now button right here and it's going to save. And the way this works is we're going to be programming over here by dragging these blocks and moving them over here. And then we can run the program by pressing the green flag button here and then we can see what our program is going to do right here in the graphics window. So for example, uh, let's, uh, let's move Abby a little bit to the side and let Scratchy take center stage. Uh, it's going to be much easier for us to figure out exactly where to put Scratchy if we can start off by putting a grid in the background. So let me just show you how to do that. Uh, we're going to click on this button right all the way in the bottom left which allows us to change the backdrop. So I'm going to click on that and the last backdrop provided is this XY grid. I'm going to double click on that and you can see that the grid shows up here. And if I move over to the scripts button over here and select the motion blocks, I first have to cl uh, click on a sprite that can move. Now you can see that these motion blocks are provided here and you can see that when I move Scratchy the corresponding position on the grid is automatically updated in all these motion blocks which is an extremely handy feature that Scratch provides. I think I'm going to make Scratchy a little bit smaller. It might be a little easier for us to work with that. So for example if I line up Scratchy on the crosshairs right here you can see it's close to minus 100 plus 100 so that would be minus 100, that would be the x direction, and plus 100 in the y direction. You can see that the visible area on this screen, uh, y maxes out at about 180 and negative 180 on the bottom, and likewise x maxes out at 240 on the right side and minus 240 on the left. Uh, you can change the uh, location of Scratchy just by dragging it and you can see that the uh, coordinates are going to change. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make Scratchy move with our very first program and to do that we're going to start with a flag event so this under this flag we're going to put all the code that we want to execute whenever the flag button or the start game button is pressed by the user. So let's say we want Scratchy to move from here to here. I'm going to move to the motion blocks now and let's say that we want Scratchy to start here uh, when the game is clicked on and so we can just take this go to and add it right in there and then let's say we want Scratchy to come down here next so once again I can just put that in there and then let's say we want Scratchy to come all the way here to the far left let's just put that in then we'll have Scratchy come up here. We'll put that in. And then we'll have Scratchy come all the way back to where we started, which is right around here. And we'll put that one in. Now let's press the flag button and see how well our program works. It doesn't seem to be moving at all, does it? 
this is a common problem that beginning programmers have, and they don't realize that the program actually is working, but Scratchy is moving so fast that we can't really tell. So to fix that problem, we need to put some delays into our code. So to do that, let's look over at the control blocks, and we see there's a wait block here. And I'm going to change this to about a half a second and put that right in between some of these blue blocks. And now I'm going to copy this block. And let me show you an easy way to duplicate a block. So for example, if I want to duplicate this wait block, I just hover over it and hit the duplicate button. And I can make several copies. And now I'm going to put this back together. It looks like I need one more of these. And now let's just run our program again. And you can see that it works much better this time. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to leave a trail behind for Scratchy to follow. Uh, to do that, I'm going to put the pen down. And let's run the program again. I can also change the color of the pen by coming over here and grabbing this block. And uh, if I want to change the color, all I have to do is move to whatever color on the screen I want. So for example, if I wanted to change the pen to red, I can just hover over this stop button and now you can see clicking on that makes the pen color turn to red. So now if I run the program again, you can see the color changes to red. I can also increase the thickness of the pen by changing this value right here. And now when I run the program, I get a much thicker line. I can also vary the color of the pen at any point in the program. So for example, over here, if I want to go to a different color at this point, let's say I want to change back to blue, I can just put that in there and run the program again. And you can see that some parts are red now and some parts are blue. So with this basic amount of information, you should now be able to complete the exercises in your online textbook.